Well, it's not only a national disaster, because it hit headlines around the world, international and a national disaster, but it's also a poignantly local one as well. My name's Nigel Lutt. I was an archivist at BED's record office for many years, from 1982 to 2014, and so I thought this sounded like an interesting spin-off to what I'm doing already, because over the years I've collected a few bits and pieces which have turned up locally relating to uh, airships and the people involved. This box was made from the wood of the lift of the mooring mast of the R101, and I found it in a, a shop in Bedford in 1997. It doesn't look much, but if you open it up, it's space for cigarettes inside, and there's a little plaque which reads, Airship Mooring Mast Cardington, erected 1927, demolished 1943. This box is manufactured with material from the passenger lift and sold in aid of the Red Cross Fund. Well, two other stories relating to individuals. Um, one of them is William George uh, J. Kings, um, who was born in London in uh, 1901 and died in Bedford as recently as summer 1996. And he was a member of the Mooring Tower crew in 1930. I have a series of documents here which chart um, William's uh, career and his, his working life. First of all, he was a deck boy on the Crown of Toledo, um, a merchant vessel, in 1918. Then after that, he transferred to the Royal Air Force as a, an aero rigger between 1919 and 27. And then, most poignantly, you have his discharge from the Royal Air Force in October 1930. It says here that he was a civilian subordinate and he was a member of the mooring tower crew at the time of the R101 disaster. And he was employed as a rigger between the 2nd of August 1930 and the 31st of October 1930. And of course the latter date is significant because it was shortly after the crash of the R101 and so his services were no longer needed. And it says at the bottom, discharged in consequence of reduction of staff. I've always been interested in medals relating to the Bedfordshire and Hertfordshire Regiment and I just bought a single long service medal which is called the Efficiency Medal for 12 years service in the local territorials, the 5th Beds and Hearts Regiment and this one was to Edward Thomas Ruff Smith and uh, I did a bit of research on him and I found an article written by him in the Regimental Magazine for March 1930 in which he describes his experiences on the R101 during its trial flights. It's quite a curious story as to how he got on there. So he did a lot of carpentry work on the R101, which he mentions, and because he was a caterer, he was invited on board as a steward during the trial flights, and he says in the article that he jumped at the chance. And uh, rather sadly, poignantly, at the end of the article, he says, no one need have any fear of um, traveling on board the R101 because I was on board and felt entirely safe poignant words when you think what was going to happen um, seven months later. I'm Jeff Deacon. I was the landlord of the Bell Cotton End from 1986 to 1991 with my late wife. And obviously we were involved with the airships. In fact, we had the largest collection of airship photos on view to the public. The first one was the actual model of the airship, which was given to me by uh, somebody who worked obviously for Airship Industries. I also managed to get two lapel badges, one of the 500 and the other one of Airship Industries. The other uh, item is the proof that my late wife and I were the first ones to go up in the airship before it got its aviation certificate. We went over Junction 13 and on the way back the pilot said, anybody want to see where you can see the airships? Well they stuck out like sore thumbs, you couldn't fail to see the, the sheds. We also had Bedford Youth Theatre and they did, I think it was the realm of glory and it, it was the story of the R101 and they came down every Thursday and they, they, they'd sing like mad and then when it got to the New Year's Eve, said we'd love to come down but we, we don't want to drive and I had a quick word with my wife, I said we'll make a deal with you, so they said what's that, I said well you can stay in the pub and I turned all the alarms off and I trusted them. When they went out the following morning, they shook my hand and said, 
thank you for trusting us. I said, I had no reason not to. And they were a lovely crowd. And they were part of our life for three months. And we actually got tickets to go up and see the show, which was done in the shed. My name's Derek Binks. I'm the son of the survivor, John H. Binks. My dad was an engineer on number five car. I was three years old at the time. We lived in Sheffield. We didn't live here, so I'd, I didn't know much about airship construction or anything like that. So I know, to my knowledge, I never saw it. In number five car, engineer with Mr. Bell, they, they flew together so that when it crashed, they both got out because the water tank exploded above them. And that's how they survived. When the Bournemouth came to Cardington, he flew on it, Mr. Bell flew on it. it was Lord Ventry sponsored that. And he lived in Bournemouth, that's why it was called the Bournemouth. John and I and my wife and mum and dad, Lord Ventry invited us to tea at his place and um, we saw a lot of films on German airships that were in the, you know, this is 19, 1960 odd, that's what my dad flew on. Well, that was the last airship that came up there as such. After the Bournemouth, that sky ship up there, sky ship 500 and I think the 600. Well, I flew on the 500. I had a flight on that. You paid, I think it was about 50 pound and we had a flight to, I think they took us over to Stewartby and then returned. That, that's the one that I flew on. My, my dad never spoke much about it at all, and that's true. He was in the choir, as we were, and every October the 5th, he used to celebrate it, with, well, honour it with the choir, you know. That's about all I know about the airship river life, because I was only a toddler. <laughs> it hasn't changed at all, short saying, really. It was a good place to grow up in. It was an estate, you know, there was, there was no pub on there, only a club. There was no shop on there, the shop was in the camp. It ran pretty well. No street lighting, that was one thing there wasn't. The street lamps were up, but they never lit them. The tenants had got to pay for them through the rates and they wouldn't do it. So they never lit them. I never saw them alight till we put some up after the war. But it was a good, a good estate. Everybody seemed to get on with each other here. 